I'm Donovan Kane. Welcome to my podcast, where I read erotic stories for women to you. Why? Well, because sometimes you just want a man to read you a naughty story. I hope you are enjoying the podcast episodes. I want to talk to you. Please, send me an email. Tell me what you think of the podcast, what you think of the stories, or just say hi. DonovanCain.com Now, this week's story is part of my Erotic Adventures of You series. It brings you into the story for an adventure all your own. This week's story is called Drawn Into the Erotic Circus. I hope you enjoy it. Now, come with me, and I'll take you on an erotic adventure. Drawn Into the Erotic Circus by Donovan Cain Your name is Maggie. You love to draw. You have loved to draw since as far back as you can remember. You are good at it. You love everything about it. The feel of the pencil in your hand. The scratching noise it makes as it's drawn across the paper. The smell of wood and lead when you hold it to your lips while thinking of what line comes next. The taste as you lick your lips, as you put the end between your teeth while you try to calm the quickly moving image in your head to make it still so you can see the details. The details that are so vivid in your mind that the pencil magically takes your hand to the paper and brings the brilliant image from inside you out into the world without losing any of its luster and brilliance. Well, not losing much anyway. You even get the colors right. You work with colored pencils, a lot of colored pencils. When you are done with a picture, it looks like it just leaped from your mind onto the paper. Close, anyway. Very close. Close enough that your pictures sell. It is how you make your living. Well, survive, anyway. You sell enough to survive. You have always thought, if you could just get the pictures to be exactly like you see them, that people would buy them more, for more money. Then, maybe you could live outside your head as extravagantly as you do inside it. You always laugh at that thought. You kind of prefer living inside your head. Then, you can get it just right. You sit down at your drawing table. It has a long rectangular shelf with little boxes built in it, mounted on the wall in front of it. It holds all of your colored pencils. You have tried using a computer to draw with, but it just didn't do it for you. So, back to the drawing board you went, as they say. You lay out a fresh sheet of bright white paper in front of you. You run your hand across it. It is thick drawing paper and feels a bit like very stiff linen. You breathe in the smells of your writing area. Pencils, paper, a small vase full of flowers on the side table, along with a bowl full of hard candy to suck on while you draw. It keeps you from chewing your beloved pencils. You pop a piece into your mouth. Grab a pencil. Bring it to your lips. You tilt back in your office chair and begin rocking slowly back and forward, back and forward. As you close your eyes, the chair squeaks just a little as you rock. Rock and think. Rock and think. Suck on your candy with pencil to your lips, rocking, thinking. An image comes to your mind, a cat. Another image, a large stump, another, a tent, another, a spinning wheel, another, a man with crossed arms. You stop rocking. Your pencil takes control of your hand and jumps to the paper. It moves quickly, outlining the scene, scratching, moving. When the outline is done, you squint and see the colors in your mind. Your hand knows where each color is in the little box-like shelves without even having to look. The pencils are selected. The scratching sound of the shading and coloring fill the air. Your hand moves from pencil to pencil, replacing one with another. And then you are done. Just like that. Now one more line. Now one more scratch. 
The picture has moved from your mind to the paper. It has come to life. Well, almost. You look at the picture and smile. It is a cat, sitting straight and majestic on a large tree stump. For some reason, the cat on the stump is in the middle of a large ring, under a large tent, filled with hundreds or maybe thousands of people. There is a large circular piece of brightly colored wood standing up on its edge. A man is standing a short ways away from it, and he is staring from behind the cat, with crossed arms and a crooked smile. The scene is a circus under the big top tent. The cat is sitting on the large stump, with his mouth positioned as if he is talking to the viewer of the picture. The man with crossed arms is looking at the viewer from behind the cat as if he is impatiently waiting for something. His hands are full of knives. He is a knife thrower. The circle of wood is his target. The crowd is still and leaning forward, completely engrossed in the scene. As you stare at the picture in wonder, you utter to yourself, Huh! out loud, and shake your head. You find that you are usually surprised at what you draw. That's why you draw as fast as possible, so the image comes out without you even consciously thinking about what you're drawing. Some pictures you like more than others. This one? You like a lot, for some reason. You pick up the picture as you stand and place it on an easel in front of your big, comfy easy chair and footstool. You shake your head as you walk to the kitchen. You dig in your silverware drawer to find what you're looking for, open the fridge, grab what you came for, pop goes the cork, and you smell the fruitiness as you pour the glass of wine. You chuckle to yourself as you pour and pour and pour. It's a comically huge wine glass you bought on the internet, just the right size for celebrating. You walk back to your drawing board and sit down in your comfy chair. Sipping on your wine, you stare at the picture. It's mesmerizing. You stare, sip, stare, sip. After a while, most of the glass is empty. You raise your glass to the cat and the man with the impatient look on his face and say cheers and go back the last of the wine. You set the glass on the table next to you and cross your arms like the man in the picture. You mumble, huh, one more time as your eyes get heavy. The picture remains in your head. As you drift off, you smell a faint hint of popcorn and cotton candy and sawdust. The soft colors of the picture become more vivid. You hear a faint murmur of voices. The cat raises his head a bit, and you see his mouth move as he appears to be addressing the large crowd. But you do not hear what he is saying. His mouth goes still. The crowd roars, and the shirtless knife-thrower begins to clap while looking out of the picture toward you. Your eyes pop open. The picture is once again still. You rub your face with both hands, squint at the unmoving picture, and sigh. Too bad it's not real. I can make a fortune with a talking cat. The dream was so real. Even the smells and sounds of the circus. It was like you were there watching the cat talk under the big top. It doesn't surprise you all that much. It has happened several times before, after you have finished a picture. That night, you have seemingly entered the picture in your dreams. You have seen flowers sing, dogs smoke pipes, even a river-dancing hedgehog. You shake your head and wonder what it would be like to control it. You shuffle to the bathroom and run a hot bath to relax before actually going to bed. You slip off your sweats and put the toe of your right foot in the water. Wow, a little hot. You step in slowly with your other foot, turn to face the faucet, and put a hand on each side of the tub, then slowly lower yourself in the steaming hot water. You can feel the heat rise slowly up your legs and hips, engulfing your ass, and your pussy twitches a soft, involuntary twitch as the water line moves upward 
engulfing it. Once you're in, you lay slowly back. The water is so hot. But you get used to it enough that you can submerge yourself up to where the water line is across your nipples. You can feel the difference in temperature halfway up your nipples, and it makes them pucker. Your pussy twitches again, this time on purpose. God, you love hot baths. Sometimes you play in the tub. It relaxes you. You contemplate the thought of doing that now. A vision of the shirtless knife thrower enters your head. You see his muscles flex as he clapped in the picture while you were dreaming. River dancing hedgehogs are pretty awesome. But wow, that knife thrower. You stop in mid-thought just as your finger touches the tip of your hardening clit. Your eyes fly open wide. The knife thrower was clapping. The muscly, hot, sexy knife thrower was clapping. What if? Your mouth opens wide in wonder. You jump out of the tub and walk quickly down the hall to your drawing room as you towel off on the way. You stand in front of the picture and stare past the cat at the shirtless man. Why not? You mumble as you throw the towel to the side and reach for the picture. You move to your drawing desk without even getting dressed. Lay the picture on the desk and sit down. You reach for a piece of hard candy and place it in your mouth. Then you reach for a pencil and bring the end to your lips, tapping them with the end. You close your eyes, roll the hard candy with your tongue. The slight breeze from the ceiling fan makes your nipples harden. You clench your pussy and feel the wetness of your thoughts begin to form there. You smile. Your eyes fly open and the pencil once again takes your hand to the paper. Your hand moves quickly, changing pencils on the fly. You draw, shade, scratch. Drag the pencil, scratch, suck on the candy, scribble back and forth, faster and faster, stop. You lift your pencil and hold it tightly against your naked chest, your chin resting on the top of it as you stare at the finished picture. You wonder, well, there's only one way to find out. You put the pencil back in its place, lift the picture, Walk it across the room and place it back on the easel. Then you take a few excited steps to the chair, see the enormous empty wine glass, snatch it up real fast, and actually run to the kitchen. You are so excited you grab the corkscrew again, forgetting you still have an open bottle of wine in the fridge. You refill the glass and walk slowly back to your big comfy chair. You have the end of the corkscrew between your lips, and you are thinking as you carry the enormous glass of wine. By the time you sat back in your chair, you were shaking your head. Silly girl, wishful thinking. You toss the corkscrew onto the end table and sit down with a sigh. You bring the glass to your lips. You tilt the glass, pulling some wine into your mouth. You hold it there, enjoying the taste, as you stare at the shirtless knife thrower. You clench your pussy, feeling the ridiculous amount of wetness there, and swallow the mouthful of wine, enjoying the feeling as it slides down your throat and warmth spreads through your body. You look at the new version of the picture. You really didn't change much. On each side of the picture, there is half a man. The edge of the picture cuts through the middle of each man's face, through the middle of his torso through the middle of the large bulge of his crotch and down to the arena floor. Each image is a mirror of the figure on the other side. One side is the left side of a man, the other the right. He is shirtless like the knife thrower. His chest is bare of hair, slightly muscled and glistening in the light of the big top. He is wearing nothing but very thin, very snug green tights that start just at his hips. He has hair to his shoulders. 
They are wearing elaborately etched golden masks that covers their eyes and nose. The eyes peering out are bright green, matching their thin tights. The only other change that you made to the picture is that the cat is now wearing a very elaborately decorated red jacket and a black top hat. You stare at the picture. You sip your wine. Swallow. Stare. Sip. Stare. You toast the picture. To me being a silly girl, may I never stop being her. You throw back the last gulp, set the glass on the end table beside the corkscrew, and throw yourself back into your chair. You lay there naked, legs stretched out, feet up on the footstool. You bring the middle finger of your left hand gently to your left nipple and circle it as you stare at the picture. You stare briefly at each half of crotch and the green tights at each edge of the picture and picture yourself with eyes pointed out to each side, trying to see both bulges at the same time. You laugh and shake your head. You're losing it, Maggie. You mumble to yourself. Then the laugh disappears as you concentrate on the shirtless knife thrower. You sigh and drag your finger down your torso, caressing as you work your way down your inner thigh to the bottom of your pussy lips. You open your mouth in amazement when you find that you are so wet that it is running down the crack of your ass. You can't remember the last time that happened. You move your fingers slowly up your slick, wet lips and touch your middle finger to your clit. It's hard and slick from the wetness pulled up by your finger. Just a few light circles with your finger and you will come. You start to feel yourself tighten. You stop and take your finger away. No. You want to wait for the dream, if it were. You hope it does. You place your hands on the arms of the chair and stare at the picture, the two bulges in the green tights, the slick bare chests, the shirtless knife thrower. You are so close to orgasm, your breathing is short and heavy. You take a deep breath, let it out. Relax your entire body. One more deep breath and you relax further. Your body relaxes. More and more. You are still very aware of your hard nipples. You can feel your heartbeat in your pussy. It feels wonderful to be right on the edge. You stare at the erotic circus scene. Your eyes get heavy, and the smells of the circus get stronger. The popcorn cotton candy, peanuts, sawdust, the smell of oil on the bare chests of the men on each side of the picture. You look into the cat's eyes. They turn a brilliant shade of purple. He raises his head a bit and begins to talk as he stares into your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most erotic show on earth. The crowd cheers and claps. Our first act of the evening is brand new to our show. I know you will enjoy it. The world-renowned knife thrower Santo Salvini and his princess Dahlia. The crowd roars. The cat in the red coat and hat raises a paw to silence them. The crowd goes quiet as the music begins. It is a slow, thumping drumbeat with horns and stringed instruments in a mesmerizing tune. As you listen to the drumbeats, you can feel them deep inside your body. Thump, thump, thump. The half-man on each side of the picture in the green tights both step into the picture fully. There are actually two men, shoulder-length hair, Gold engraved masks, bare, slickly oiled chests, and thin green tights to match their entrancing green eyes. 
they are identical twins. The bulges in their tights are both slowly growing larger and larger at the same rate. They are looking at you. They each hold out a hand towards you. The cat gives you a slight nod. Butterflies erupt in your tummy. You gasp. You stand and hold out a hand to each of them. As you hold out your hands to them, your hands appear in the picture. You pause and move your hands around a bit, looking at them in the picture. Then you straighten them out, palms down. Your nails are painted purple. Each twin takes one of your hands in his. They both bow, then lightly kiss each of your hands. You feel their breath and a slight tickle of their lips at the same time. They stand and pull you gently into the picture. The crowd roars. You realize you are in the picture, but you are still outside the picture, too, watching yourself from outside of it. It's like watching yourself in a movie, but you can feel everything that is happening to you. It is an odd yet entrancing feeling. You see that in the picture you are wearing a very small two-piece chain mail outfit made of very fine gold chain. The bottoms are secured on each hip with a small purple ribbon. The small chain mail top barely covers your breasts. You can feel your nipples trying to poke through the small holes in the golden chain mail. The top does not go around your body, but is held on with a strand of purple ribbon around your neck and fits like a halter top, just hanging over your breasts in the front. You are wearing a thick purple collar with golden accents inlaid on it. You have matching purple bracelets and ankle bands as well. Each has a golden D-ring attached to it. You are wearing a golden, elaborately etched mask over your eyes, with one purple feather sticking up on the left side. The final garment is a sheer purple cape, hanging over your shoulders, draping weightlessly over your shoulders, down to your ankles. You are barefoot, with purple painted toes. You see yourself as the twin assistants raise your hands over your head and release them in the air. You wave to the crowd. As you turn in a circle waving at the crowd, they cheer louder. You face the cat. He holds up a paw again to silence them. You drop your arms. Once again, only the rhythmic music can be heard. Thump, thump, thump. The cat bows to you, and behind him you see the shirtless man, hands full of gleaming knives, arms crossed, staring into your eyes from afar. Thump, thump. Thump. You feel hands brush the sides of your neck as the twins untie your robe and remove it and let it drop to the arena floor. You see yourself from behind now as you look into the picture. You see nothing on your back as the front of your golden top is just draped over your breasts. You see the purple ribbon on each hip holding your golden chain mail bottom up you can feel the small golden thong chain move in the crack of your ass as you begin to walk toward the shirtless man. The chain mail rubs lightly on your breasts and on your pussy lips as you walk. You are so wet, you feel tiny riblets begin to run out around the small golden chain. You can feel the snugness of your collar, bracelets, and ankle bands. They seem to get snugger as you get closer to the man. You stare into his unblinking eyes. As you approach within a few steps, you see that his eyes are an entrancing, deep purple. You don't remember drawing purple eyes, but there they are. He is wearing nothing but purple tights and a mask like the rest of you. No, his mask is silver etched with black and purple engravings. His eyes stare out at you. The rhythmic music plays. Thump, thump, thump. 
As you stand in front of him and stare into his purple eyes, he takes a step toward you so that you can feel the warmth of his chest on your face. He is tall. He kisses you softly on the forehead, and you feel the warmth of the kiss pass through your body like a soft, warm hum that ends in a tingle in your nipples and on the very tip of your clit. He motions with the bundle of knives in his left hand toward the large, round target. Without hesitating, you turn and walk to the target and then turn back to face him. The music continues. Thump. 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 As he faces you, your breath hitches as he holds one knife over his head. The crowd roars. Oh, God, you mumble. You fall lightly back to the target and feel the cold, slick wood on your back. A hand takes each one of yours, lifting your hands so your arms are straight to your sides. You are standing with your feet slightly apart. One of the twins whispers towards you and tells you to spread your legs. You do without ever taking your eyes from the purple eyes of the knife thrower. Thump, thump, thump. The crowd is still, quiet. The knife thrower places his hand behind his head, winds up, and throws the knife straight to your face. Thump. You can feel the coldness of the blade on your left cheek. He selects another. Thump. Coldness of steel on your right cheek. Your head is held steady, facing forward. And then, in a flurry, thump, 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 thump. There's a knife on the bottom and top of each of your wrists. Thump, 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 thump. One on each side of each ankle. And then the knife thrower kisses the last knife, cocks it behind his head, and throws it straight at your stomach. Thump. Right between your legs. You can feel the coldness of the flat edge of the knife lightly between your pussy lips. Once again the crowd roars. The twins are busy lashing your wrist to the knives with large pieces of purple ribbon. The knife thrower's purple eyes are staring into yours as he strides steadily towards you. You feel the twins tying your ankles to the knives down below. The knife thrower continues. The eyes, the purple eyes, get deeper and deeper closer and closer. He stands in front of you now, the twins on each side facing you. The knife thrower, as he stares into your eyes, reaches with his right hand towards your pussy and pulls out the knife. You take in a quick suck of breath as you feel the dull flat edge of the knife rub across your pussy lips as he pulls it out. He holds the knife between your face and his. He takes the knife and moves it so the tip is right below his eyes. And then he steadies the tip right on your breastbone and slowly drags it up your neck. And with a quick slice cuts the purple ribbon in your top, your chain mail top falls to the ground. A quick slice to your right hip sends their bottoms crooked and hanging. Another slice to the other side and they fall to the ground as well. You're now naked, spread eagle, on a large wooden target in front of an enormous circus audience and they're roaring 
and cheering. And the purple eyes still hold yours. As the knife thrower looks deep into your eyes, he holds both hands over his head, knife by the handle, rears back with his fists, and sticks it right above your head. You gasp. The crowd goes crazy. And then you hear the cat in the red coat and black top hat. Silence! The crowd obeys. All that's left is the music. Thump. 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 The man in front of you reaches out with his right hand and puts his middle finger clear to the back of your pussy lips and slowly drags it forward. You can feel the wetness run over his finger. He brings it to your clit and then removes it and brings it to his lips, gently touching his finger to his tongue. You can feel yourself right on the edge of an orgasm. You don't know what's going to happen next. But whatever it is, you are not going to last long. The man reaches over your head with both hands and comes closer as he reaches up for the handle of the knife blade above your head. You can smell his scent and oil as his chest is just a few inches from your face. He seems larger than he did before. He takes a step in between your legs and brings his other foot up to match it. You can feel his enormous erection on your mound above your pussy. You can feel the tip of it right below your belly button. It's wet and dripping. He bends his head down so his lips are close to your left ear. And he says, Hello, my princess. You take a deep breath, lips slightly parted. You can feel yourself begin to tense. Not yet. You think to yourself, Not yet. You will yourself to relax. Deep breath. In. Out. Without warning, the target tilts backward violently. Before you know what's happening, you're laying flat on your back, underneath this mountain of a knife thrower. He's between your legs, his cock on your mound, top in your tummy. He's holding on to the knife handle above your head, an elbow on each side of your face, holding his weight off of you. You see vaguely a twin on each side of the man. Each has a small silver knife in his hand. Simultaneously they make small cuts on each side of the man's purple tights. Then they each grab with a hand to his tights and with one fast motion tear them off of his body. You feel his enormous cock come loose and slap down onto your bare skin. Your abdomen tenses. Not yet. Then the twins walk to each side of you and use the same silver knife to cut the sides of their own tights and they rip those off as well. And you have a glistening, wet, hard cock on each side of the target. They move towards your hands. You instinctively open your palms and grip the cocks as they come close. The twins facing you. The knife thrower on top. Thump. 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 Goes the music. The knife thrower move slightly downward and kisses you lightly on your lips 
and as his purple eyes look deep into yours, you feel the end of his huge cock at the entrance to your pussy. His chest flexes. You can feel him enter slowly. It starts to slide in your pussy. You cannot believe the feeling of ecstasy that begins to build in your body. You grip harder on the two cocks in your hands. As you grip harder, you pull down, raising your pussy, raising your hips to the knife thrower. He enters you and enters you, sliding in and in until you're completely full and you feel the base of his cock on your pussy lips. He pulls it out slowly. You lower your hips, and as you lower your hips, your hands raise on the cocks in each of your hands. He comes back in you slowly, your hips raise to meet him, each hand sliding down to the base of each twin's cock. It matches the music in, up, down with your hands. Knife thrower pulls out. Your hips come down. Your hands go up the cocks of the twins. It matches the beat of the music perfectly. Thump, 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 thump. You begin to tighten. Thump. Thump. You can feel the cock in each hand tighten. You can see the knife thrower on top of you tighten. Thump. 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 Your orgasm begins. You feel the knife thrower begin to spurt inside you. You feel the fountain of each twin erupt on your fist and run down your wrists. Pump, pump, pump. The knife thrower comes and comes and comes. Your vision goes blurred. The picture fades. You're passing out. Nothing. Just black. Nothing. You're so warm. You're so wet. Your eyes flutter. You open them. And you see the picture in front of you. You blink. And you look down. And you're covered in sweat. Your pussy is still twitching with the aftershocks of your enormous orgasm. You look up, and there, sitting on your writing desk, behind the picture, is your cat, looking at you, his tail twitching over his head as he sits and stares. And you look at him, and you ask, what do you think I should draw next? The end. I hope you were drawn into the erotic circus, and I hope you enjoyed the story. Come to DonovanCain.com and talk to me. Tell me what you thought of this story and others in the podcast, or just send a message saying hi. I'd love to talk to you. My personal email is donovan at donovancain.com. Don't forget, follow and subscribe to the podcast. That way, you'll know when a new story comes out every week. I'm Donovan Cain. I'll be back next week to take you on another erotic adventure.